We are going to begin with some breaking news here. An Aero Mexico plane did go down just after takeoff this afternoon in Mexico's northern state of Durango. Smoke could be seen coming from the fuselage, but remarkably, the governor of Durango is saying tonight that no one was killed. All right, so today's breakdown shows the Aero Mexico aircraft crashing in a field July 31st, 2018. Um, from here, you can see some smoke, and I'm sure it was a, a very hectic call um, because of the 101 on board. Thank goodness they were all safe. Um, so looking from here, they had Oshkoshes. Those look like T-1500s. They probably have 1500 gallons of water each. Um, looking at the wreckage, it doesn't look like too much of the fire spread outside of the aircraft. Maybe they got there in a good amount of time. Um, there's a lot of dry brush. It could have turned into a big brush fire. It could have turned into a lot of victims being rescued or having to be medically treated. Um, but from the picture, it looks like the people got out, escaped, and the aircraft continued to burn. That's the aircraft before, Aeromexico, um, and that is the aftermath. You can see it burned quite a bit um, through the fuselage, working its way to the back. But other than that, it looks like the surrounding area is pretty unaffected. Reports on the scene show a plane on its be belly badly damaged. There was obviously some sort of fire because thick black smoke could be seen for miles. We did learn it was an Embraer E-190, which can hold about 100 passengers. Local authorities are telling us there were 101 people on board. 97 of them were passengers and four were crew members. Okay, so looking from this picture, you can kind of see the hand lines being pulled. These trucks, at least ours, some have um, structural panels, panels which allow you to control the pressure. Um, because these trucks are older, I'm sure these ones have structural panels, which means that they can throttle down the, the pressure, um, kind of where this guy is standing right here. There should be a panel um, um, or on the opposite side, on the driver's side, where he can throttle down the pressure so that... If not, the pressure around 240 um, PSI is made or set on the truck so that those turrets on the top can um, have enough power to put out the fire. The bad thing about that is if you pull the hand lines, um, you're getting those same pressures on the hand lines, which is a real butt kicker sometimes. But looking at the pictures and um, from what I've seen, it looks like they had a structural panel which throttled down the pressure to workable, workable hand lines. Ash happened in Mexico's northern state of Durango. The flight was headed to Mexico City. Durango's governor says the plane made it off the ground, but was hit by a gust of wind as it left the runway, causing the plane to land abruptly on its left wing and forcing the engines to catch fire just a few hundred yards from takeoff. Okay, so this picture shows a pretty good um, over-the-top scene. So if you needed ambulances to come in, I mean, I don't know how good. Those fire trucks have four-wheel drive, so they can drive through some of that brush. But maybe those ambulances would have to park on that road. Um, that means you need a lot of triage um, equipment, maybe backboards. You're going to have to carry people out or carry them to the road. Um you know, luckily everybody survived. I don't know how many were walking wounded and were able to leave on their own power and how many were too injured. Um, but based on the fire crew that was on the scene, it didn't look like there was too many mutual aid responders and other other personnel around the scene. It looked like it was just a, cu a couple of trucks took care of it and uh, um, the passengers were okay to kind of make their way back to the terminal or to medical help. Okay, so based on this picture, you would get the call that there was a plane crash. So you would have to, you know, you can see the smoke. You would have to get your get into your truck. So you have to see, um, do we have enough agent 
um, you're probably a long way away from the hydrants. So do we have enough um, equipment and help? How many souls are on board? How much fuel is on board? Um, and um, just try to get a, a passenger count. What airlines is it? And try to figure out um, also what was the, the mechanism or the nature of the emergency, what caused it to crash. If you can, maybe Tower knows, maybe the pilots spoke to Tower before they crashed saying what the problem was. So you can kind of think, since it's such a far away away as you're driving there, um, you can think of all the possible things that can go wrong or what could have happened and what you're going to be dealing with when you get on scene. Again, here's a picture um, of the aircraft. It looks like they did the right thing by pulling hand lines. Um, that's a good thing for several reasons. One, you save a lot of agent because there's no hydrants around. The tr water you have in that truck is probably all you're gonna uh, all you're gonna have um, to put that aircraft out. Um, so if those were, th you know, you probably have at least six thousand gallons on the scene. Um, 3,000 gallons if those are 1,500 um, on each truck. Um, with that being said, those those hand lines, you have a good amount of time, maybe, you know, 15, 12 to 15 minutes um, on the hand lines. And that's if you went nonstop. Um, so they had, based on the scene, you can also use those hand lines to take out any brush fires that are between you and the aircraft or any exposures around there. Um, so that's another good reason to, you can have accuracy with those hand lines. It looks like there's a lot of personnel around to help pull those hand lines and get everything in place. Um, the fuselage seems to be really low to the ground, like it, it landed on its belly. So access to the fire seat um, looks like it's reasonable, which is why they probably got the little high ground on the aircraft and shot down into the aircraft, putting it out. Um, but all these things are things that kind of you got to think about when you're um, accessing these these fires and and trying to game plan what you're gonna do to put it out.